After 12 consecutive years, is the Netanyahu era over? Rival parties unite in a bid to oust Israel's longest serving prime minister. But will parliament approve their coalition? And can they really work together? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is Israel's anti-Netanyahu alliance. Now, eight parties from across the Israeli political spectrum have forged a historic coalition with one ultimate goal, to oust Benjamin Netanyahu. But the Israeli prime minister will not concede without a fight, calling the proposed government the fraud of the century and a threat to Israel's security. Yair Lapid and Naftali Bennett are heading the alliance and doing everything they can to get parliamentary approval for their new government. But even if they succeed, will they be able to keep their fragile coalition from crumbling? We'll have that debate in a moment, but first, here's Natalie Pohonen. With the midnight deadline looming and less than 40 minutes to spare, Israeli opposition leader Yael Lapid made the call that could lead to the ousting of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. By Lapid's side was Naftali Bennett, the man who could be Israel's next PM. For some voters, the prospect of a new government was an instant cause for celebration. But after four elections in less than two years, the political divisions are never far from the surface. Mark my words, another week and a half, there'll be no government. They'll fight with each other and there won't be a government. Lapid has stitched a patchwork coalition together. It stretches across the political spectrum from the far left to far right nationalists. Despite stark ideological differences, they've been united in one goal, unseating Netanyahu. This proposed government of change includes the United Arab List Party. It would be the first Arab party to be in a governing coalition in Israel. I just signed an agreement with Yair Lapid so that he can form a government after we've reached a critical mass of agreements on issues that will serve the interests of Arab society and provide solutions to urgent problems Arab society faces in various fields. The political wrangling comes in the wake of the 11-day conflict between Israel and Hamas. More than 250 Palestinians and 12 Israelis were killed. The ceasefire is less than a month old. There is another hurdle to get through before the coalition can even start its first day in office. Lawmakers in the Knesset will have to vote to confirm the new government. The alliance has a razor-thin margin of 61 seats in the 120-member parliament. If even one lawmaker defects, it could mean another election. And no one is counting Netanyahu out just yet. He is, after all, Israel's longest-serving prime minister. He's also on trial for corruption. He denies the charges. Right now, this most unlikely of coalitions is still a working concept. But within the next fortnight, it could become a reality. And that would mean a new era for Israel without Netanyahu at the helm. Natalie Pohonen, The Newsmakers. Let's get more on what this new coalition could mean for Israel. And from Tel Aviv, I'm joined by Yossi Balin. He was Israel's justice minister under Labor Prime Minister Ehud Barak. He was also part of the Oslo Peace Accords team. Also in Tel Aviv, Israel-American journalist and senior Israel-Palestine analyst at the International Crisis Group, Marav Zonshain. And in Jaffa is leader of the Balad Party, he, in the joint list, of course, Sami Abu Shehade. Thanks all so much for being with us. Greatly appreciated. Now, before this coalition can actually do anything, it has to get parliamentary approval. 
So let's start first with the likelihood of that happening. Mayrav, I'll start with you. Will Neftali Bennett take the reins from Netanyahu, or uh, is the Knesset going to stop it? Well, I'm certainly not in the business of trying to guess what's going to happen into Israeli politics, but it looks like the hardest part is behind them. The anti-Netanyahu coalition, or the change coalition, as they've been calling themselves, have gotten enough of the votes. Um, Netanyahu will do everything in his power to incite against them, to say that they're a left-wing coalition uh, in order to try to undermine them. They have about a week until they can start to try and get this to a vote. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I, I believe it, we're in the right direction for that. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Netanyahu is already out lobbying parliamentarians to reject the coalition. He actually called it a dangerous left-wing government. Uh, Yossi Balin, do you think that scaremongering could convince the Knesset? I hope not. I'm, I'm flattered uh, by the, uh, what Netanyahu is saying about uh, being a left-wing uh, government. Uh, I hope it was. It is not necessarily so. Uh, there are people from right and from uh, left. Uh, it happened in Israel already. There were unity governments uh, in which uh, very strange uh, bedfellows found, uh, found themselves uh, together in, in, such, in such governments. Uh, some of them were successful. Some of them were not. So it is not necessarily a formula for success, but it doesn't mean, on the other hand, that it is a formula for a failure. Okay. Uh, Yossi Balin, I don't know if you changed your mind since yesterday. Uh, you told one of our producers, actually, that this new coalition, if it comes to power, could actually be, quote-unquote, refreshing. How so? Yes, it could. First of all, you have a prime minister here who is indicted for bribery. You know, it is not a joke. Israel is a, is a democracy. The, the, it is under the rule of law. You can say it is a flow democracy. You can say there is a problem with the occupation. Everything is right. But the bottom line is that you cannot have in Israel a prime minister like that. Not, uh, not to speak about his politics, about the fact that he is the one to blame for, for stopping the Oslo process and whatever. The fact that he is there in his, as, as an indicted person is unbearable. And this is the glue for, the, for creating such a government. But it doesn't mean that if, hopefully, he will not be in, in, in the government uh, in, in a week time, that this uh, new government will fall. Because the, there are other glues, and one of them is the eagerness to prove that this, this group of people, a younger one, an ambitious one, and without ultra-Orthodox uh, Jews, which is interesting, can work together. Yossi, you say you describe it as unbearable, but do you fear at all that bad could get worse? Without Netanyahu? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I don't think, for, for example, Bennett is, is more to, to the right than uh, Netanyahu. It is more or less the same school of thought. Fair enough. Sami Abu Shehade. Will you vote in favor of this coalition? Of course, we are going to be against this coalition because for us, the issue is not Benjamin Netanyahu. For us, the issue is not changing the persons, but changing the policies. And I totally disagree with Dr. Ben. I'm surprised that he still insists on calling Israel a democracy. Then he says, like, but there's the occupation, as if occupying another people is a marginal fact or a marginal issue. And also we have seen the three very important reports of very important institutions like Amnesty, B'Tselem, and the Human Rights Watch, which is proving that Israel is having an apartheid regime dealing with its Arab-Palestinian minority citizens, which are 20% of the population. Continuing to call this a democracy, I don't know what, 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 what is not a democracy if Israel is one. Now, regarding the new government, our issue with the Israeli different governments is not that we love Netanyahu or hate him or that he, he and he, there's questions about he, he took a bribe or not. The issue here is that Israel is, has been built as a state for the Jewish people and sits in seeing itself as a state for the Jewish people. So it's discriminating against 20% of its own population. We, the Arab Palestinian minority, who are suffering from discrimination since the establishment of the state. Not since 
Benjamin Netanyahu came to rule. So we right. think there should be a different solution that makes Israel a democracy like all other states, a state for all its citizens, not a Jewish one. Uh, fair enough. Yossi, I, I want to get your response in a second. But first of all, uh, uh, Sami, let me just ask you about Mansur Abbas. I mean, some say, actually, try to argue that his presence and the presence of his party in this coalition could actually finally help rein in uh, the right wing and his coalition partners like Neftali Bennett. Uh, do you not see that at all as the case? Or is he, I mean, is he just a sellout really in your I, opinion? It, I think using the, the terms right and left in Israel are quite misleading because what people have in mind when they hear right and left, it, 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 it has totally different meaning than what we have in Israel. First of all, part, half of the coalition or more see themselves as right-wing activists. Part of them are fascists like Naftali Bennett himself or Lieberman that part of his political agenda is to do transfer for the Arab Palestinian minority from within the state. Or someone like Gidon Sahar, who's talking about Eretz Yisrael now, and totally does not see that there's a Palestinian people at all in his political agenda or in the way he, th and he sees the world. So first of all, the new coalition is built also out of extreme right parties. Okay. That includes Lieberman, Bennett, and Sahar. And also, all these are Palestinian people, okay. the Israeli citizens and the rest. Yossi, I'm going to give you a chance then to uh, convince Sammy that, uh, that the glass is actually half full here. Well, I'm not trying to convince uh, Mr. Rapushkade. I think that he is a... Uh, uh, he allowed to express his uh, views. I'm sure that he would not uh, even vote for prime minister uh, for for a government uh, under under my prime ministership, uh, because I'm for a Jewish state, a democratic state, and uh, this is a such a big difference between us. I mean, this is the original uh, UN resolution on on partition from 47, a Jewish state, and to come after more than 70 years and to say you should you are not you do not deserve a Jewish state is beyond uh, the way to to argue. I mean, the question is whether this government is going to be better than the previous one, and I I believe that there is a fair chance that it will uh, be so because, for example. There is a big, big issue in Israel, which is not debated every day. And this is the fact that Israel as a democracy, by the way, uh, I, I suggest to Mr. Abdul Shader to, to look at the Freedom House report, the annual report, and to see exactly where Israel is uh, on, uh, on the list of democracies. And of course, occupation is taking it da down, but still, it is a, 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 a democracy which is a flow democracy, according to their category, like the United States. But speaking about the Constitution, I, I, which is... I don't know about any other democracies in the world that are occupying another other people, Dr. Bailey, but you can okay. continue. It's okay. okay. Yeah, you, you, can, you can just look at, at these reports and see objectively where we are. Uh, Israel is a democracy. It has huge problems. And occupation is a dark spot. There is no question. But, you know, there the is easy way to say Israel is not a democracy. You know, it is like South Africa. There is nothing to, to compare. It is bad enough without uh, having uh, the, the Assad, South Africa regime. But if, if I can say about what, what this government can, can do, even if it is only constitution, a constitution, which I believe is very important for the minorities, it is a promise which was given uh, more than 70 years ago. We never did it. And I think that, and it is mainly because the, the ultra-religious parties are saying that a super law can only be the divine law of the of the Bible. Now, if they are not there, and the, the right and left are ready to sit together okay. uh, on, on the issue of constitution and other issues, there, there are many other issues which have been solved, and it is not a question necessarily of right and left. Okay. And there is also okay. one, one more point. You know, they are saying today we will not deal with the peace process. On the one hand, we will not build new settlements. On the other hand, we will not deal with peace process. It is impossible to say something like this because life is life and things are happening in reality. And they will have to refer to things on the peace process. So I believe that to say that they will never touch peace 
is also something which is far from reality. Fair enough. Um, uh, Merav, I'd, I'd like to come back to you. And I'd, I'd actually like to return to uh, Mansour Abbas uh, and the United Arab List Party joining this coalition. Uh, some have said he is dangerously giving this would-be government an air of inclusivity uh, that isn't really there, that could actually damage the Palestinian cause. I'm, I'm wondering what you make of that. Well, I think it really depends on which Palestinian citizen of Israel you speak to. There are plenty of Palestinian citizens who are against Mansour Abbas's move into the government, and they are for popular protest. And if you look at what's been happening inside Israel for the last month or so, you've had a complete breakdown of the illusion of coexistence between Palestinian and Jewish citizens. And you have drivers of conflict that involve the ethnic discrimination and the dispossession of Palestinian citizens all the way from the top down. And uh, this is an issue that uh, every single Israeli will have to face and an issue that this government needs to address. And Mansour Abbas has chosen to address it by um, participating inside this coalition. Whether or not he can make good on the promises um, is yet to be seen. Um, and there's a big, I think, conflict uh, within Palestinian society about how to improve their quality of life. Mm -hmm. But what we know about the current Knesset is that uh, a vast majority of it is not interested in real Arab-Jewish partnership. It's not interested in genuine equality. And so these issues will continue to be drivers of conflict, uh, with whatever the government makeup will be. And I mean, going forward, Merab, do you, is there still, uh, you know, no chance of ending the occupation, uh, restarting peace talks in earnest, uh, as well as, you know, reinvigorating the idea of a two-state solution? Would any of that uh, move make any progress under this coalition government, Merab? No, it's absolutely not expected to happen. I mean, this coalition is completely, uh, its only agenda is to oust Netanyahu. It is a right, it's going to be a right-wing coalition. The fact that it's going to be better than the status quo uh, is certainly arguable. It's, it's, I'm absolutely happy that Netanyahu will be out of government. I think it's good for Israel. But this coalition is a right-wing coalition. All of the ministers of the most important cabinet members are going to be of, of the right. Um, that doesn't mean, again, that there aren't improvements or important significant shifts. But the fact of the matter is that nobody in Israel is talking about the occupation. Nobody with any political power is talking, except for the joint list and a little bit merits, is talking about the fact that the status quo is unsustainable. There are deep problems that go well beyond Netanyahu that this coalition is not going to be able to address. And that goes deeper than just the fact that there's a political deadlock, but that there are deep, deep seated issues inside Jewish-Israeli society that they refuse to address. Right. And Sammy, I mean, what happens then if this, if this all falls apart? I mean, it doesn't have your support, and there's a, probably a 50-50 chance that it won't get through parliament. So what, does, is, can Israel handle a fifth election? And I mean, to what end? Well, till now, all the scenarios are quite open, and, uh, and they are all on the table. But I'm really terrified from what happened few weeks ago when Netanyahu started feeling that the earth is shaking a little bit under his regime and he did all this attack on Gaza and on, on the Palestinian people all over, I, I'm really afraid that this fascist might lead for another war or another attack on Iran or any other uh, target that he would see right in order to bring another time escalation, in order to prevent uh, doing another government in Israel. Netanyahu now is a very dangerous man, and putting him in this situation might also bring him again, uh, bringing the whole world for another es escalation and much more massacres and crimes against the Palestinian people and against the humanity. So I'm also a little bit afraid also from this scenario. Uh, I, I would like also to a little bit say another very important thing. Usually most of the world are talking about uh, that the Palestinian people seems to be living only in the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem, and they forget the 20% population, 1.8 million people, living as citizens as the state of Israel. I claim that Israel can never be a democracy as long as it wants to see itself as a Jewish state, because it's going to discriminate against all the non-Jews, which is 20% of the population, the indigenous community. We are part of the Palestinian people. This is why we are offering a different solution. We say that Israel must become a normal democracy. We call it the state of all its citizens. And we want to have equality and justice for all, by the way, Arabs and Jews. And if you, you pray like a Jew, you don't pray, it's your problem. 
the state should be neutral and deal with the citizens according to their citizenship, not according to their religious or other identities. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing you and uh, Yossi and Sami really illustrate this, what seems like an almost unbridgeable divide here. But Yossi, I mean, go ahead. Could you, I know you believe strongly in the Jewish state of Israel, uh, but would there ever be a way to overcome that? So that's, uh, I don't know, how Israel could maintain a Jewish it's character, but go, go ahead. Of course, it, first of all, there will never be a, a non-Jewish uh, Israel. Israel should be a Jewish state and a state for all its citizens. This is the platform of my party, of merits. And this is my belief. It is not uh, contradictory that uh, after whatever we suffered as a people in, in our history, we deserve a state. I think that arguing about the Jewish state in 2021 is a bad joke, okay. a bad joke. I mean, okay. people like me who are secular and liberal, and, and uh, I, I notice the Israeli-Palestinians. Believe me, Sami, I notice them. And I think that they deserve much more than they have. But you, should, you will never take Israel for me as a Jewish state. If Israel is a non-Jewish state, America is preferable for people like myself. Okay. And in a way, you, you, yeah, you send us out. You know, the, the UN resolution is not a joke in 47. You're, you're, and you know how many you are, Arabs... What you are saying, some, some, what you don't, are saying don't, now is dangerous, is dangerous not just for you. It's, it's dangerous also for other Jews. And what you are seeing now is quite dangerous. What I am saying is that we can build a democracy for all. For me, you for you, much. for all the others. Thank you very much. And, when, when the and, UN and decided... The, insisting, insisting on building it as a state that wants to give more for the Jews or want to be a preferring Jews or in any issue, it means that it can bring never equality between the citizens. This is all what I'm saying, Yos. I, I will never give up on this equality okay. and I will fight for it until my last day. But it doesn't mean that a UN resolution, which refers to a much, much bigger Arab minority in 47, still called it a Jewish state because it understood okay. that Jews deserve it. And you will not take it from them. I will fight for you, but you are not going to fight for me. Okay, you know what? I'm, I, 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 no, no, it's, yes, it's yes, a fascinating I'm discussion, I'm, but I'm I, fighting I, for all the citizens. I, I, just, thank for just thank you very much, Sami. Thank you very much for your, we, your generosity. We, we, in the, we, we in the Ballot Party, we are struggling for peace, justice, and equality for okay. all the citizens. What? Regardless, regardless of their identity. Again, Thank we're you. seeing uh, that unbridgeable divide uh, seemingly illustrated here, but we only have a few minutes left, and I want to go back to what could potentially happen with this new government. Uh, made of, we, we heard Yossi say that, you know, the Palestinians, they deserve more, Arab Israelis deserve more, uh, but I think we can all agree this probably won't be the government to give them uh, more. In the meantime, though, Merav, is there any hope that I know you're, you don't like the idea of this coalition built around just this anti-Netanyahu cause, but at the very least, if, if Netanyahu is indeed, you know, prosecuted uh, and punished for corruption, could, could it build some kind of sense of unity among all Israelis? Is there any chance that, that this could be, could have a silver lining to it? I mean, look, Israel is mired in conflict. Uh, it is mired in a, in a nature and culture of incitement, and there's nobody who's stopping that. And that is something that will continue. And also the majority of Israeli, uh, the Israeli public is, has moved to the right, and certain aspects of, of things that we thought were completely fringe have become normalized. Uh, for example, annexing land and uh, keeping millions of people under occupation permanently. These things are not going to change in the, in the next coalition. But Israel is currently at a turning point, and the, the, the violence that we see on the streets of Israel and Palestine and Gaza are, are a testament to that, that that's, the status quo is unsustainable. So will this be the bridge to further change? I certainly hope so. Um, but, you know, Netanyahu is, is really not the main issue here. Uh, Netanyahu continues to frame the debate in Israel. He continues to dominate the media. He has changed the way the police and the courts work. Some of that damage might be able to be undone in the same way that Biden is trying to undo some of Trump's damage. But the underlying factors of conflict remain. 
And until Israel rebuilds some of its political parties, I mean, on the left specifically, because if you look at the left-wing parties in Israel, they have completely conceded to uh, Naftali Bennett, who is the settler leader. Um, so that is a reality. I mean, you can argue whether he's more right or left right, whether he will moderate in a position of prime minister or not. But the fact of the matter is there is no left wing Zionist discourse in Israel that is effective in any way. And that's just um, an, an unfortunate fact. So okay. I'm not very optimistic, unfortunately. Meirav, uh, I will let that be the last word because unfortunately we're out of time for this edition of the Newsmakers. I'd like to thank all three of my panelists sincerely so much for joining us. And of course, our viewers for tuning in as well. I'll leave it there. See you next time.